the mic, we can't hear you. Okay, just talk with the police chief because of the situation outside, we're not going to open the doors anymore. I apologize. I need your help. 
We'll go across the room. I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. I don't want to give long speeches. I want to do most, first and foremost, I want to listen to you. It's important to me. There are things that you'll agree with me on. There are a lot of things you won't agree with me on, and I get that. But I want to hear it, and I want to hear it from you. So uh, I'll kick things off just to get a sense of where we're at. And then please, I'll start raising your hands, and I'll start calling on people. Be respectful. Try to give a short, sweet, concise uh, question or comment to the extent we can do that to the, is the extent that we can get through more people than, than just a few. Uh, so President Trump uh, nominated... Yeah! Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. Yeah! All right, that took sense there where we're going. All right, let's start going to some questions. This gentleman in the purple, right there. Yes, sir. As loud as you can. As loud as you can. No, no, no. Stay right there. Go ahead and ask your question. Oh, you're not Look at you. We did this before. Some of you will disagree with the positions I've taken. So, I appreciate what you said. Let's go over here. One of these no sides. This gentleman right here. Right here. Right there with that hat. Keep going. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. I'm asking. No, no, we, we not, we're not coming up on stage. Sorry. This gentleman is. Fine. disagrees with what I said, I'm trying to recognize him so he can say something. Yes. No, 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 no. You do not have a question. I'm recognizing this gentleman over here. You can ask your question. You can ask your question. I'm trying to... Sorry, I'm trying. Hold on. Oh, come on, people. Sit down. This is, hold on, hold on. Easy, easy, please, please, come on. Come on, we're better than this.
So I went down with some of the uh, uh, law enforcement components down the river. When I got out the river, there were two gentlemen there. I, I can't remember who the other person is. You were evidently one of them. Didn't recognize who they had on. Um, and we had a good dialogue, did we not? We had a good discussion. We walked all the way to my car. I, I, I spent, how much time did we spend together? 15 minutes, 15 minutes. It was, hold on, hold on. How do you answer this question? Uh, were you the gentleman, I can't remember which one was which, wrote for our City Weekly, is that right? It was the West Hostel. Right? <laughs> I was the one that told you that I have nothing. I have nothing. Running rivers is my life. That's what I do. So what's your question? He asked. And I told you that the only thing that I'm ever going to have in my life is these wild and free lands. That's <laughs> Let me go, let me go. And I think that you probably are an outdoorsman, and you probably do enjoy the outdoors. So I want to know why. Why are you granting all this access to private interests? Yes! yes. yes. Well, well said. And I thought when we were there, you know, not planned, and we did have a good discussion with the two of you. And it was very heartfelt, and I very much appreciated the perspective that you offered. Because you, you spent a lot of time down there. Like you said, you're not going to be rich. You're not going to be able to go out and buy this private land. And it's very photography. And I love our public lands for doing that. So, hold on, hold on. Did you like the fact that I withdrew H.R. 621? We'll talk about 622 in a minute. Okay, I'll come back to it. I will come back to it. Right. Yeah. You'll do it again. So, what I what I liked about what I was trying to do with Rob Bishop in the public lands initiative. And by the way, to specifically answer your question, I have no private interest down there. I don't have land holdings. I don't have any private interest. I really don't. What? My friends? I, I don't know who owns what, where. I look, I, that's not. You say no, but I. I and so, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What we're trying to do with, with the Public Lands Initiative is come to a balanced approach. I hope you do appreciate that not every single person has the same viewpoint on the use of the public lands. And so what we were trying to do, hold on, hold on. What we're trying to do is find a balanced approach. You have outdoor recreationists, you have conservation needs, you have energy development, you have a whole host of needs. And one of the things, one of the things that happened, hold on, hold on. One of the things that happened when the president designated the National Monument, it would not be with the congressional delegation. There's some, there are some aspects of the bill I think you'd really like. Okay, well, let me ask you. One of the things that uh, I helped champion was 300 plus miles of contiguous wild and scenic designation down Desolation Canyon. Did you like that? Oh, yeah. No? You opposed to that? Because that was in the Public Lands Initiative. How about adding, hold on, how about adding almost 20,000 acres to Arches National Park? Did you like, did you like that? Come on, speak up. Would you or would you not? Add 20,000 acres to that Arches National Park. All right, I appreciate it. All right. What about... 
What about the Cleveland Lloyd area? What about making that a national monument, protecting the largest collection of Jurassic era bones on the face of the planet? That was in the public lands initiative. Okay. I'll come back. I'll come to it. I'll come to it. Yes. All right. Seems like well, a lot of people want to talk about the other bill that I introduced, which was HR 622. You want to hear about that? Okay. Let me go to that. Put your hand down for a second. Let me explain HR 622. One of the core questions you have to ask is do you want more law enforcement or do you want less law enforcement to protect our public lands? Okay, I think that's a reasonable answer. That's what I agree with. But please, 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 let me try. Please, please. I, I want to I wanna share with you what I'm seeing and I want to hear what you're seeing as well, okay? But it needs to be a two-way here. Just let me get through this for a second. I won't drag out the time and filibuster here. Here's the, here's the reality. We need a right for people. I can hear you. Believe me, I can hear you. Okay? So, I'll... I can't get to the next topic until we get through to this one. Okay, is that fair? There's lots we got to talk about. Okay? The BLM police and the Forest Service police, I'm going to talk specifically about BLM, okay? There is, there is but one BLM police officer for every one million acres. One million acres, okay? Hold on, hold on. Okay? Here's what happens. Here's the reality. It varies from year to year. But in many cases, if not most cases sometimes, the BLM doesn't have the resources in order to do this. They don't have the staff, they don't have anything else. So what do they do? They contract, hold on, they contract with the local sheriff in order to do that. In fact, if the BLM is out there and needs backup or needs help or needs assistance or is doing an investigation, what do they do? They call their local sheriff. Now the local sheriff is locally elected. They're elected by the citizens of that of that county, and so what I'm suggesting what what I'm suggesting that we do is in order to get more law enforcement that are there to protect the antiquities that you care about, that I care about, that others care about, to make sure that there isn't the other hold on that there aren't the other problems that that are out there when people are misusing the public lands. There needs to be a degree of law enforcement. What this bill would do hold on what this bill would do was get rid of the BLM and Forest Service Police and give that money and those assets and that responsibility to the local sheriff. The net effect of that, the net effect of that is more law enforcement at the local level who can solve these problems and their crimes. There is no way that you're going to convince me that the BLM police and the Forest Service police have been doing the job that they were elected, that they were empowered to do. Just one okay. But don't, I want you to know, that's my intention, is to actually have more law enforcement that can actually enforce and protect our public lands. Cost the taxpayers more money. In fact, it does drive it down to local level. And right now, that's what they do anyway. In fact, if the BLM, hold on, if the BLM has a problem, what do they do? They call the local sheriff. That's what they do. That's what they do. All right, let me go to another question. I've got to explain. Let's go to this gentleman in the hat back there. Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. Hold on, wait till you're quiet, man. Wait till you're quiet, then we'll start. Hold on. Okay. I would like to know why, if Trump is too despicable for your 15 year old daughter, what is he fine for me? That's part A. Okay. And part B is why is such a despicable person not worthy of any of your oversight committee? Amen. <laughs>
can I make a recommendation? If you do like Donald Trump, let's just hold that for another time, okay? So, listen, sir. I, listen, wait. Please, 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 please. You, I, I, I want to thank you for the, A, the sincerity in which you asked that. It's a great question, and let me try to answer Okay. Sure, go ahead. Chairman, myself, the ranking member, Mr. Cummings, and we sent a very uh, candid, very direct letter to the White House and to the Office of Government Ethics. They need to investigate it. What the hell Ann Conway was wrong, it should never happen again, and there should be some accountability there. Absolutely. The other thing that I did is the GSA, which administers the, hold on, hold on, the GSA, which administers contracts, there is a contract there in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, of a hotel. It was the old post office building. And I have asked back in December, I asked for a copy of that contract. Then it took time to get the unredacted version of that contract. Then there was a letter that went out today to the GSA getting their opinion. What did they think of this contract? Where you have somebody who is both the tenant and the landlord. That does raise some eyebrows and some questions. And that's the appropriate thing to do. So, in terms of, you know, doing my job, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Let me go to this gentlewoman right here. I, and hold on, I want to give some background here. I'm asking a woman right here, right next to you. This woman right here, I'm trying to get her. Okay, that's, now let me give a little background. Hold on. Yes, let me give a little background. And maybe you could, but I'll, I'll do it since I got the microphone. Okay? Shh, hold on. When, when, the, when some of the comments during the cam campaign came out that uh, were directed towards Muslims, I thought I was absolutely wrong, and I went on national television to say that I thought I was wrong. But I also did something, I also did something that I wish others in the delegation in our state would do, 
And that is I went out and started to visit mosques here in Salt Lake County. These aren't even in my congressional district, okay? Thank you, I appreciate that. And yesterday, after about a week of trying to set it up and find the time where I could actually be in town and find the time, we invited local Muslim leaders to come in and offer their perspective. And we had a good, about an hour together. It's something I plan to continue to do. I was invited, there's a scout group uh, that's at uh, one of the Islamic centers that I plan to go uh, visit, the kids that are going through that. I think that what I told the state legislature today, I had an opportunity to go before the Utah State Senate, and I, I took that valuable time there, and I went through and I, I told them this story that I think it was wrong, and that we're better as a community. These are people that they're citizens, they're neighbors, they're friends, they're business owners. They've been vetted, by the way. And it's a shame. And I also said, look, I happen to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I happen to be Mormon. I'm a convert to the church. And you know what? Mormons, as much as anybody, they ought to get and understand what it's like to be a religious minority. Right? And that as a community, and as a society, and as a county, and as a state, we can do more to lift and buoy them up, make sure that they know they're loved and cared for. And one of the people that was in that meeting is this, uh, this young lady here. So if you have a question, please, follow uh, Okay, let me repeat it so they can hear it, if you, if you couldn't hear it. So on this list of so-called banned countries, I would, I think it's a little different. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. That's what he called it, okay? So-called banned countries did not include Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. Uh, Osama bin Laden was in Pakistan, so why weren't those countries called out and why haven't I, I inquired about that? Yeah, and he was a Saudi citizen too. But those two countries. Yes, I know. Yes, go ahead.
I'm gonna answer the question. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer. That's fine. She asked, she asked a very good question about Pakistan and Saudi Arabia. Honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. I really don't. I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I know that the seven countries are on that. The seven countries that were on that list were identified in large part by the Obama administration who said they were very I've been to Libya twice. You had the FBI director who testified before Congress that they can't do vetting in many of these countries. In fact, I think a fair representation of the discussion we had, there wasn't a person around the table from the Muslim community who disagreed with the idea that people need to be vetted. They have to be vetted, right? So, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to do that in countries where there is no government, let alone a stable government. We rely, when we give people visas, we rely on the host government to actually help us in the background checks. So if you go and do some, hold on, when you go back and you actually give some, uh, you know, a fingerprint or something like, what are you going to check it against? And I think that's part of the, that was part of the concern. Yes. Yeah. Jointly sent 300 letters to the administration. 
jointly, bipartisan way, when we had an obvious problem this morning, when Kellyanne Conway made those comments, the first call that I made was to Elijah Cummings. In a very bipartisan way, in a very bipartisan way, we addressed that issue. It took a few hours, and I want you to go home at some point and look at the letter that we sent. There is no case to be made that we went soft in the White House and we didn't have some vigorous oversight on this. Now the other thing, most people, you're, I, let me tell you something you're really not going to like. You want to hear this, hold on, you're really not going to like this part. The president, under the law, is exempt from the conflict of interest laws. He's exempt. He is required to do a financial disclosure, which he has done twice. Six subcommittees, we've got about 60 people. There's always a government, somebody doing something stupid somewhere. So we want, there is money to go after, and we will continue to go after. We really will. I'm going to go to this gentleman over here. I got to keep moving, or we're just not going to get, look how many hands, and we're going to get to a handful. Let's go to this gentleman over right here. I'm going to identify the whole thing red there.
a second. Okay, she stated it very eloquently. That is not required by law. I think there is a very dangerous precedent, very dangerous precedent, to have somebody who's in power to overuse that power. I have a, a, an authority. To as much as they can. Did you want to follow up on that part? Go ahead. But she, I'm giving her time to, to follow up. Hold on.
as far as the wall and everything else that you mentioned, I don't care how big, far, and wide the wall is. If you don't fix legal immigration, you never solve this problem. You never solve this problem. All right, I'm trying to give her back the floor here. Hold on, give her back the floor. I tell these people I cover them, and then we'll go. Yes, yeah, sorry. Go.
she was diagnosed in, in her 30s, and um, it, it was one of the hardest things I went through in my life. Um, we had a, uh, my dad, he died from cancer, uh, prostate cancer. He was, he was one of those old school guys who, you know, I don't need to check up, you know, I can get through anything. And a uh, doctor told him if he had had any sort of checkup in the last eight or ten years, he, he'd be here today. Um, that's hard for me. Um, my wife, Julie, uh, she, come on. a little decency here, okay? I'm trying to tell and convey to her, and maybe nobody else is going to listen, but I want her to know that I care about this, and I care deeply, and I care personally, and it's within my family, okay? I'm going to get there, okay? Relax. Be good for your health. My wife, Julie, she works with a plastic surgeon, and she works exclusively with breast cancer patients and those that are having to go through reconstructive surgery. I'm proud of her for doing it. Planned Parenthood, my concern, okay, and you're going to disagree with this. It, my concern is to give that organization federal taxpayer dollars when we have so many in our community who disagree with that. There are a lot of people and a lot of money and a lot of services that can be offered through these community health uh, organizations. Uh, uh, and I don't believe with the resources that they have, they have a hundred plus million dollar endowment. Their revenue is more than a hundred million dollars. Okay? And so. I'm trying to get those, I, I believe a better use of the money that would be more conducive to the greater number of people who are actually making those community health services. All right, sorry, there was another person over there. Yes, this gentleman right here, Korea, this gentleman right here. This sir, right here, in the front here, this gentleman. I would just like to say two statements and a question. I voted for you. Thank you. I voted for President Trump. Thank I support you both. Come on. I also support. I also supported President Obama, even though a lot of Republicans four years ago felt the way you do tonight. What I'm asking you, Congressman. What I'm asking you, Congressman. How do we come together as a country now? He's a president. We're giving his hatred to the people. are none of us. What do we do? It's a good question. For those of you that couldn't hear it, he said that he, look, he, he said he voted for President uh, for Barack Obama to help make him the president. He voted for me, but he also did vote for Donald Trump. And the reality is, Donald Trump is the president of the United States. Amen. So, what is it that we're going to do? What is it that we're going to do as a community? Okay. To come to Try to just not yell and scream at each other, okay? I, I'm going to do everything I can to try to listen to as many people as I can. You're going to agree with me on some things. You're going to disagree with me on, on other things. But we need to have, make sure people are involved. And to the young people that are here in front, thanks for being here. You better get some a lot of extra credit for this, okay? You are our future. Yes, they should. They should be the future. And that's exactly the wrong message. We want and need. Young people to be here and be involved and be engaged. And learn how to learn. Right. I'm going to go to this young woman over here in the red pants. Red pants. The pink pants. Whatever you want. The cat's a question and answer it. Yes, I did. It's a cancer question. Go ahead. Hey, look. Uh, let me add. Okay. The cancer question goes up to me. We would spend like four or five times as much as we do with my cancer. It kills 1,500 people a day. And that should be one of the priority for me. We're going to go to this. Oh, come on. I already gave you time for a question. Hold on. Yes. 
The question is, what are you going to do about sexual harassment, maybe sexual misconduct, sexual predators? Let me tell you what I am going to do. That's a very good question. For two years, as the chairman of the Oversight Committee, for two years, we have heard routinely, we have heard testimony from the EPA, the National Park Service, a host of others, where you have sexual misconduct, sexual predators, people are doing things that they should never be doing. What I heard back from the administrator, hold on, what I heard back from the administrator of the EPA, what I heard from uh, uh, Sally Jewell, the Secretary of Interior, what I heard from uh, a number of these people who are in very high important offices that do help control us, they said, we need tools. We need the ability to fire people. We need that ability to still power people. So you want to know what I'm doing about it? One of the things that we're doing is what's called the IG Empowerment Act. The idea is to make them so that they can get in there. We have people that will just resign and then they just get let go. We have too many at the Department of Justice that are not actually prosecuting these because they don't think it rises to a level that's worthy of their time. That is wrong. We also have to define, particularly in the federal government, what sexual harassment and sexual misconduct is done. If you go within the Department of Justice, you will find between the DEA, the FBI, the ATF, they all have different standards, and their table of penalties is a joke because it goes from nothing to firing somebody, but they never fire anybody. So we have been spending a lot of time working on this, and I do hope that we do have a bipartisan bill to address that. That is really the goal of the government. And I think we can do it. Let's go to this woman in the middle. In the white, right here, the best. The, time, I, I, the time's up, but I'm gonna keep going. Yes, shh, shh, shh. Right here in the best. Yes. Thank you for taking my question, Representative yes. Devin. Thank you very much. Um, I'm also a retired teacher, so I feel like we've got more than our share of time. Yay. Um, and I'll also use my teacher voice, so you can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a retired teacher, and I taught for 35 years in Salt Lake. And I rarely had a discipline problem because I laid out my expectations very clearly, and I laid out the consequences. But once in a while, at the beginning of the year, after just two or three weeks, I could look at the kid and think, you're going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's been two or three weeks. <laughs> Thank you. 
required to disclose a tax return? He's not required to do that by law. Is he required by law? Is he is he exempt or not exempt from that? Hold on, is he exempt or not exempt from conflicts of interest, which a lot of people have expressed concerns about? But he's, he's exempt from that kind of law. It is not, it is important. It is, look, impeachment is about high crimes and misdemeanors. It is also making sure that he abides by the law. And, and I cannot, this is, I, it's not a Jason Chaffetz line. It's not a Mick Mulvaney. It's not, if you know, pick your person. It's the law, it's the law of the land. And it has to rise to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors in order to get to that part. Who doesn't want me to go with this young lady right now? I'm going to try to belt it out. I appreciate your bravery in doing this. You got to belt it out. You got to be quiet. It doesn't work if you're not quiet. in my kids' generations. Do you believe in science? That's not true. There's seven chapters. 
but also, is there a cause and effect of three vaccines? <laughs> there are a lot of people that have expressed that concern. I'm just saying that. I don't want to send, I don't want to send a message that suggests that vaccines are not safe and not do that well. But at the same time, there are, I have had a lot of people who have expressed concerns about how those things are done. that we believe we should, we should address. And uh, I don't know that that results in a hearing or legislation or anything other than us looking at it and asking, asking those questions. So, we'll Let me go to this woman over here, uh, White Pants. Yes. Thanks for serving our country. 
Thank you for your service. Quite frankly, we need more women. We need more women in our armed services. So thank you for your service. And I, I and from my bottom of my heart, I, I, I don't know you. I haven't I haven't met you uh, other than this. Uh, but I am truly sorry that you had to go through that. And there are far too many women who've been on the receiving end, uh, physically, uh, mentally, uh, verbal abuse, and those types of things. And that should not be tolerated. It really should. And so, I understand that you disagree with my ultimate vote for Donald Trump, okay? But I, but I look, we have got to make sure, one of my very best friends in Congress is Trey Young. Trey Gowdy, a congressman from, a congressman from South Carolina, is a 20-year prosecutor. And he has an, he is uh, now the chairman of the crime subcommittee on the judiciary committee. I am not an attorney, okay? Usually in my town halls, usually when I say that I'm a, when I, hold on. When I, hold on. Usually when I say that I'm not an attorney in a town hall, usually I get like a standing ovation, but nevertheless, uh, I'm on the crime subcommittee with Trey Gowdy. As Trey Gowdy has laid out the next two years and things that we need to do within that subcommittee, within the judiciary, there are a number of laws, some of them are reauthorizations, some are new laws and things that have to come into place. I know his heart's behind that, I know my heart's behind it, and the very best thing I guess I can do is to go back and, and demonstrate that. Not just talk about it, but actually demonstrate it. So, that, that is my ability to do that. Listen, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I want to thank everybody for being here. No, I want to thank everybody for being here. You can understand I get through all these questions. I know you love your country. I love this country. I thank you so much for being here, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. to see what the crowd is like outside. People are streaming out, and it's pretty much too dark to see anything else, so we're going to be signing off. Thanks for uh, tuning in to the Salt Lake Tribune live stream, 
And uh, thanks for commenting and liking and sharing.